Hey, Fight Fans, it's Maddie Levine back in action for the One Two Punch. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. If you aren't, I don't know what you're waiting on. Hit that subscribe button because today we have a very special guest. She is a rising star and just an all around fun person to follow. It is Miss Taylor Starling. Hello, my dear. Hey, what's going oh, on? Oh, you know, just living my best life. How about you? <laughs> same it's been a really crazy week for me with my children and balancing life and yes. all that in, in general so I'm glad we finally get to talk yeah so how are you feeling I know you weren't feeling too hot so <laughs> well it was it, when it, anything in my schedule goes awry because I have such a crazy schedule I've got two kids uh yes. they're four and five I've got Woo! to train I just do so many things that are my own podcast and just everything so when a range gets thrown in my plans it makes it definitely a lot more difficult. I schedule everything in this month. Ever since Christmas, my whole schedule has been thrown off. I had Christmas and then I got COVID and then it snowed. So the kids haven't been in school for well over a month. And it's just been me juggling, like doing all the things. So, but I'm trying to be super mom. Yeah, we're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost yeah. back into the swing of things. Yeah. So speaking of podcasts, Banana and the Bee. That, so that's like, what, a couple months old, right? Yeah, it's a good, I, I want to say like a month or two, me and Dave yeah. uh, always talk all the time. And we just had the decision, like, let's, why don't we do a podcast? We're always talking. Um, we try to switch it up and try not to talk about fighting so much, but it's so hard because that's both what our lives revolve around. Right. So, right. But it's so much fun because I love Dave. And even if we didn't have the podcast, we talk every day, every other day. And yeah. it's kind of our whole thing. It's our little baby. It is, it is such a fun follow too. I, I recently started following, I recently met Dave Van Auken. So shout out to him. Such a cool guy. We were just saying that uh, off air. Um, so what, what's it like being a podcaster now, as well as uh, a fighter? It's hard for me. I'm always so used to being the person that's being interviewed or like being on this right. end of the podcast. So sometimes I have to remember oh, I need to speak up more or not just wait for someone to talk to me. I need to be very, very vocal and outspoken. And it has helped me a lot. Um, I used to be the worst interviewer. When I first ever started fighting and I did a podcast or an interview, I would be a clam. I would sit there and just be terrified. So this has definitely helped me get out of my shell. And I have so much respect for you guys that do it. And I'm trying to do it. And I don't, there's some weekends I get nervous. Like when I have a certain guest on, it makes me really nervous and I don't know why I'm always like my armpits are sweating and I don't know what to say or ask and Dave's so good at it that it makes it hard for me I'm like you're so fucking good at it and I'm not <laughs> don't get it twisted we all get nervous it's just all about the poker face <laughs> yeah yeah so for me I go full nerd when I get nervous and I don't know sometimes it's more so Dave taking over and yeah but it's a lot of fun I like it and it's helping me a lot with my I guess social skills. I have pretty good social skills, but just talking and getting even better. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, so fun fact, I actually uh, got familiar with you uh, with Glory and your performance in Glory. Um, oh, wow. So, I know. So we're, we're what that, that's like two, three years ago at this point, two, right? Two, three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you've come such a long way since then. And I mean, you know, you've always been a killer but now you're really this rising star with bare knuckle. Do you ever see yourself doing kickboxing again or anything like that? Or do you think you really found a home with bare knuckle? I really think I found my home with bare knuckle. The thing is, is um, I'm well-rounded. So if I had to, it's one of those things, like if I had to, and for some reason bare, bare knuckle didn't work out or I didn't have a fallback plan with some other bare knuckle promotion, of course I would have to go back to that. Um, but it's crazy because I look back all the time. I'm like, whoo, like, I can't believe I was signed to glory, like kickboxing. Um, I've always been a striker at heart. Like, I've always just wanted to be a boxer. But pro boxing's really hard to get into, especially nowadays. It's very, like, set up and rigged. And I wanted to fight fair. And I'm a nasty fighter. And bare knuckle just made sense. And once I fought bare knuckle, I knew that it was perfect. I was like, this is it. This is where I need to be. And, um, yeah, I found my home there. But if I had to go back to it, I would. I, I just like to fight in general. But yeah, I feel definitely in my comfort zone in bare knuckle. I mean, I think it's safe to say that you're a pretty gritty fighter. 
So it's only, you know, it's, it's fit, Thank right? You. It makes sense. Um, so for, you know, people that might be new to the scene, I mean, Bare Knuckle, I feel like it's starting to get this momentum, right? It's starting to get more people looking at it. What do you think are like some of the main differences that might attract new fight fans? Like what is so exciting about Bare Knuckle besides all of your blood all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I think the one thing I can say about it with fans and I mean, you, that's with Bare Knuckle. You could be a fight fan or not have any idea what's like really going on and enjoy it. Uh, people tend to go to like UFC. A lot of people enjoy the UFC, but the fans that don't know what's going on are in there like knock them out. And they're in a grappling match, like a heavy ground and pound match. And people are like, knock him out. Why are not you just knocking him out? And Bare Knuckle is one of those things where you can go and you can say that and it makes perfect sense. And you don't even have to know the technicalities of it to enjoy it. Um, and it's just so shocking. I don't know. People get so astounded by it. A lot of people don't realize the technicality of it. Very, very technical. Um, so I think that's what makes it interesting. A lot of people, even myself, I had a moment where I was like, oh, these people are like barroom brawling in a ring. Like when it first came out, I was like, I've never seen anything like that, but I would love to do it. And I just think people, I want anyone, <laughs> yeah, anyone can enjoy it whether you're a fight fan or not and fight fans can really enjoy the technicality and then fans that don't really know what's going on can get the bloody knockout war that they want to see and yeah. I think that's what really is making it explode and especially like the women's division like the women are all really hot <laughs> so it's like for real not though too- I'm yeah. like, I remember first like getting into bare knuckle and I'm like what is with all these beautiful women like just yeah. go, it's like so entertaining like it is just so much fun to watch it gives you a very good um pro wrestling feel and then there's it's like, like, it's like real yeah yeah and it's real but it's real yeah these like the drama and the name calling and the beef is real um there's beautiful women there's great personalities like I think that's what really just makes bare knuckle shine it's so different <laughs> it's so, so different. I'm, I'm curious because a- after your fights you know I think you shared after both of your last fights your poor hands girl <laughs> oh my gosh so after a fight how long are you resting until you're back in action now the first one um I've learned a lot with my first one. My first one, I realized I went out balls to the wall and wasn't thinking so much technically in that fight. Like there was definitely a lot of technicalities in it, but I was in that fight, like feeling like I was fighting for my life. Um, But my hands still get fucked up regardless in any of them. But that fight, it took me four months to heal completely for a solid four months. This time it only took me like a couple weeks. It was a lot more technical, not just going in there and trying to like have this crazy slug fest with Hannah guy and just, kill myself um but yeah it does take a lot longer the face though you would think the face takes the longest but it doesn't it only takes about a week and it's down uh your hands definitely are what feels it the worst my hand still right now like my right hand is still giving me a little bit of problems but other than that it's it's not too bad it's longer than normal I would say but Mm -hmm. I've been injured more fighting MMA I've had broken I totally believe that yeah 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 do you ever find yourself still training MMA just for just for shits or do you just you Uh, know you're just like yeah I shouldn't be doing that right now the funny thing is I love everything I love kickboxing I love wrestling I love striking but I hate jujitsu so that's the (laughs) one thing that's the one thing I try to just like I try to force myself to do it but I don't enjoy it so I find myself always like I don't need to do jujitsu because I'm not fighting jujitsu but I should always keep it on the back burner Um, but wrestling, I love to wrestle. I love to kick. I love throwing knees, elbows, stuff like that. So I do enjoy doing that every so often. Uh, the jujitsu, I can just take a hard, hard pass on that. (laughs) I think, I think I've taken a total of five jujitsu classes and don't know if I'll be taking any more. We will (laughs) see. There's just, I don't know. There's just, there's something about striking that just makes you feel so alive and it's just so fun. It's just like, I totally get that. Knowing you can punch someone. Yeah, like no one can just punch right in their face. Like, feels good. (laughs) I know you just probably feel that way about, like, choking somebody out. But I know enough that I'm like, all right, if someone gets in a street fight with me or something, I get choke them out. I know what I'm doing. Um, But I don't want to – I don't – nah. I'm good on that. I get it. But you know what? You found yourself a home, and you're doing so well with Bare Knuckle. Um, 
let's talk about it. Let's talk about this big fight announcement that just happened with Bare Knuckle, um, with Faria versus Hart happening, Knuckle Mania 2, February 19th. Your first reactions when you heard about this fight, what, what were they? Oof, it's hard because I obviously feel like I should have been in that spot. And um, I was told there's going to be a tournament. So I'm like, cool, I'm, I can't wait to be a part of this. Then that just gets dropped and this fight gets announced. And I kind of knew about it before it was like officially announced. And of course, it definitely kind of hurt my heart a little bit just because I was like, man, I've worked so hard this year and I feel like I should be in that spot. Um, but I can also see the side of it. I, I Part of me feels like, almost like it was a little bit unfair and I don't mean it in a hateful way because I actually don't really dislike either of them. Christine, I have so much respect for Christine. I have so much respect for Britain. I do see why they are fighting for the belt, but at the same time, I kind of was like, eh, I don't see why they're fighting. Like, I feel like I should be a part of that. Um, but I think that they kind of talked their way right to it. Like they both, had a week or two of just going in on each other and like cussing each other out up and down and just shit talking to each other. Cause they don't, they don't like each other. And I think that that really helped be like, all right, well, there it is. There's the women's belt fight. They don't fucking like each other. They've already fought. Great story. Going to be a great fight. I'm very excited for it. Now, now that I said, it, I'm like, all right, well, it kind of sets up my storyline even better. I get to be the number one contender and I know that if I don't get this fight, then I'll be next in line. I know I'm next in line. There's nobody else that's next in line. It has to be me. So it's a cool buildup for me, uh, but I was a little salty. I was a little salty, but now I'm very excited for it. I'm looking forward to it, and I'll be watching it, of course, very closely. Of course you will. Do you think you'll try and be in attendance, or do you think maybe you'll try and get on a card? Like, have you heard anything? Um, I In the rumor mill, rumor mill I've heard that uh, – I might be fighting in March, which I'm really hoping happens. It's just been kind of like taught, like they said, Hey, when do you want to, when are you feeling like you're ready to go back? Uh, what about March? I'm like, perfect. I'm always ready to fight. So whenever, but I might be there. I might not I have a couple of things going on. Like I got to travel to do business stuff and I really want to, but for me, it's not so easy to leave. Like I told you, my schedule is crazy crazy so for me to yeah. go out of town and do all the things I gotta have everything lined up at home on the back end so yeah I'm I really want to go I want to see Chad Mendez fight I'm very very excited for him to debut and um, see all the other fighters fight and then be there for the women's fight because I feel like it only makes sense for me to be there and be like I'm fucking next <laughs> okay absolutely and not to mention like get you know getting your face time and like being like I'm watching you motherfuckers. Yeah, <laughs> you know I'm what I mean? I'm, here. I'm the number one contender. Yeah. Let's go. That's awesome. Uh, let, let's talk about being a mama for a second, because I'm sure, <laughs> you know, it's not easy to balance not only being a mom in general for anybody, but then you throw in being a professional fighter at the same time. And how yeah. old are they again? They're four and five. <laughs> like that is <laughs> not an easy age. Like no. how are you mentally? Like, are you good? <laughs> yeah. No, I, it's, oh man, it has its days. It has its days. They, I, I think they are the greatest thing in the whole world. Of course, they are my whole entire world and they are my driving force for everything that I do. But yes, yeah, sometimes I am like pulling my hair out and I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do all the things, but I look at them and I'm like, all right, I'm doing all these things so that you can have a great life and I'm building all of this for you and being an example for you. Um, they're the coolest. They're wild. All they do is fight each other all the time. They're sweet, but they fight like just each other. They don't ever, they're the best well-behaved children, but when it comes to them being alone together, they want to rip each other's heads off all the time. <laughs> Four and five, you know, it makes sense. It yeah. makes sense. And I'm sure, you know, if they're anything like their mother, they're pretty feisty, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that that's awesome. But, you know, kudos to you for making it all work. I mean, moms are just super people. Like they are just super women. Um, yeah. And I just admire how dedicated you are. Um, oh, you. So, it's the most rewarding, difficult job in the entire world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the most rewarding, difficult job. Do you, do you ever let them watch your fights? Like, are they at that age where they're interested in it? Or like, what, what's, how did, how's that dynamic with them? It's funny. They have watched my fights. Um, 
they watched, I think, my last one. But when I fought Knuckle Mania, uh, when I fought Teresa and it was like a bloodbath, I think they watched a little bit of it. Um, and then I called my son afterwards on FaceTime, not even thinking of anything of what I look like. And I'm drenched in blood. My eyes like shut. My lips were like this big. I'm like, I won, I won. And my oldest was like, yay, I'm, I'm so happy that you won. And then when we hung up, he like lost his shit. He was like, my mom's hurt, she's hurt. And, but other than that, they always tell me that I'm the best, most amazing fighter in the world. And they cheer me on. I, they haven't been in person, but I'm like, man, they're four and five. It's hard to go take them to some wild bare knuckle event out of state at night. And just, I want them to be older and I want them to say like, I want to go. But they watch, they cheer me on, and they know what's going on, um, and they're the coolest. They think I'm the best fighter in the world, and that's all that matters. That's literally all that matters, you know? So yep. let's take let's take a peek into 2022. I still can't believe it's 2022. Like, I, I keep <laughs> calling it 2021. I'm like, what the fuck day is it? I don't know. Um, but in a perfect world, what does your 2022 look like? Me with a belt around my waist. Um, I'm buying a house. Um, that's like the two things I want. I really want to buy a house before 2022 is over. And I really want to be, I'm not going to be the first women's champion, but I want to be the, the flyweight champion for bare knuckle or the 115 champion. I can go down and wait. I will go down and wait and fight at 115. Um, just another good year. Like people always say like, this is my year. This is that I want, I want it to continue on. I don't want it to just be like, Oh, 2021 was the year of Taylor, like 2022, 23, 24. I want to keep it rolling, keep the momentum, momentum rolling and just thrive. Like I'm, I made it to this year last year. I didn't think I was going to even be where I'm at today. And I just wanted to get better. So I'm just looking forward to, it. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm here rolling with the punches. Do you think there's going to be any more tattoos this year? Oh yeah. I'm trying to get my back. I'm trying to get my, my back completely just like covered. And then I might be done for a while, but it's hard. I I, I find tattoos like, like therapy. Like I don't drink, I don't do drugs. I don't party really. Uh, so for me, like my stress reliever is going and getting a tattoo. Anytime I'm like upset, oh, I gotta go get a tattoo. Clearly I'm like <laughs> upset. <laughs> Clearly my mental state is, you know. <laughs> yeah, my mental state, if you look at me, that's, um, yeah. But anytime I want to just feel like, get alone time, feel good, tattoos. I love it. So that's that's my thing. And get some cool art while I'm at it. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the best this year. And I will be following. And, you know, you got a fan in me. And I just, you know, thank you for taking the time to be on the podcast and be on the one-two punch. And, if there's anything you want to say to your fans or new fans this year, what would you like to say to them? Uh, just that I love you all. I always tell everybody I love them as much as they love me. I'm so thankful. I really, really do get so much love. I mean, I get the haters, but I have so much more love than anyone could even imagine from everybody that the haters don't even matter. So I love you. Thank you for following my journey. I, I always tell people, I'm like, I'm really not as cool as you think. I try. Um, <laughs> and that's about it. Shout out to Dave Van Auken. Shout out to my children. Shout out to you. You guys are awesome. And thank you. Thank you.